here's another little tip that I took from the Japanese archers is that in Kudo, you're either on target or you're off target. So I haven't gotten bullseyes with these arrows here in this video, but it doesn't matter right now because one, the point of this video is to teach how to use the thumb draw. And two, you're either on target or you're off target. That's what their approach is. A strike is a strike. And of course, when you've got something like a bottle that you're aiming for, if you're trick shooting, sure, that becomes a whole other, whole other animal. But in this case, I've got a big target, which I will get in closer for when I'm when I've emptied my quiver here and can show you my target results. But yeah, the main thing is just hitting at the target. Not saying that I'm not aiming for the bullseye, I am. But I'm keeping my self-control and not getting frustrated when I don't reach that. Okay, that one landed in the blue and just a little higher, closer to the bullseye, which is good. And also, you're probably wondering why I'm not wearing an arm guard. You don't need one with the thumb release because the string vibrates to the right as opposed to the left with the Mediterranean grip and the Slavic. So, I mean, if you're a beginner with the thumb draw, I recommend it. I've done that a bunch of times. I've worn a thumb. I've worn an arm guard using the thumb release a few times until I got the hang of it. It was only when I got the hang of it and it became really, really hot outside, and I wanted to practice that I just took my arm guard off and uh, and my glove and started using this over my thumb and didn't need to protect my forearm because the string isn't going to hit it. It's going to move this way, provided that you've got a nice, loose grip. Ah, that one landed in the glass. And, and yeah, here's the other thing. You want your shoulder blades to do a majority of the work, so on the release, your draw hand should go straight back. And with your shoulders doing a majority of the work, your arms should be guided by your shoulders. Does that make sense? You're, you're not relying on your arms. That won't let you progress very far if that's all you're doing. you got to let your shoulders and your back do the work. Okay, I'm going to shoot this one, and then I'm going to grab the other one that I missed, and then I will show you my target results. And that one landed in the red. All right, let's see how I did. Okay, so this is how it went with my target. And yeah, as you can see, these results are pretty inconsistent, but in all fairness, these are brand new arrows. I've never shot them before. I have not shot wooden arrows like this with this, of this spine. You know, I haven't shot cedar arrows before. I've, I'm so used to the carbon arrows. And they, I guess, with wooden arrows that aren't hollow like this, they're prone to drop sooner. So that may be part of why. But it's all a matter of getting used to them. If you're getting arrows made of different materials, you need to kind of rethink your approach. You know, if you get a new box of arrows, you know, really feel it. You know, weigh it in your hand. 
and you know twirl it around in your fingers a bit just so long as that head is far away from your face far far away because <laughs> I mean look at this thing it's like a bodkin so. all right here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna shoot and then I will show you the target but like I said you're either on target or you're off target at least when it comes to this approach. When I use the thumb draw, I typically use it not for speed, but for therapeutic reasons. Like if I'm frustrated and stuff, I use it to calm down. There, it landed in the bullseye. <laughs> okay, and here's another point that I feel needs to be addressed. That I did not realize before until I started shooting LARP arrows last Christmas. You need both eyes open when you're shooting, okay? Don't close your recessive eye and rely on your dominant eye for shooting, okay? You need depth perception in order to do this right. So, and... And yeah, I know that this probably sounds weird coming from me given what you, given the target results that you just saw, but it's the same principle, okay? And what made me realize this was, yes, these uh, LARP arrows that I got for Christmas, the type that you can play tag with, basically, that I was using for indoor practice, that I have still used for indoor practice plenty of times for when it's raining and snowing and, and all that. If you close one eye and you pull back and have that big bulbous head right in front of the bow, you can't see the bullseye, okay? You can't see the bullseye, or at least in my case, for shooting indoors can't see the bottle or box or whatever it is that you're trying to hit with your spongy headed arrow because that head blocks it when you close one eye so what you need to do is have both of them open for some archers it makes no sense to not use both eyes so some people watching this video will probably know this already they might probably you know, some of you might be thinking, oh, well, duh, I knew that already. But others, uh, who kind of fell for the modern archery bias kind of deal, where it is a very simplified thing to put an arrow on the string and pull back with one eye shut. If any, if anybody like that is watching this, then here's some food for thought for you. Um, yeah, you need depth perception to shoot properly. Because that will help you gauge distance, elevation, and all that. And so, when I started shooting those LARP arrows when it was snowing like crazy over here, and I couldn't risk losing my arrows to the snow... I had to open both of my eyes, and, of course, the way that it looks when you have both eyes open is because of the separation, it looks like there are two arrows on your hand. See, like, I'm looking down right now. I'm looking downrange right now, and it looks like there are two thumb guards, two arrows on my bow hand. And so, then it can make it a little disorienting at first because then you're like, oh, well, which one is the real one? And so... It's the one that your dominant eye sees. So basically, 
for me, because the right eye is my dominant eye for shooting, and the left one is my recessive eye, then when I pull back and I see an arrow on the right side, and in my vision, one arrow on the left, the one on the left is the one that my right eye sees. So it's basically, when you have two ghost arrows, as I call them, conjured up by your, um, by the distance between your eyes, the one opposite your dominant eye, basically. So, the one that's pointing to the left, if the right is your dominant eye, and the one pointing to the right, if your dominant eye is the left. So, hope that makes sense for you. And so, yeah, both eyes open, and you concentrate. And you concentrate on the target. Sure, you line it up, but with enough practice, it should be muscle memory where you don't even need to look down the arrow so much. <coughs> where, at least with this draw, you can look at where your hand is pointing <coughs> and be able to shoot just fine. The eagle claw approach is having the forefinger pointed out as if pointing at the target. Because of the way that the string vibrates and the way the arrow flies. It's like, imagine that the arrow is on this side, and that your forefinger is pointing where you want the arrow to go. So some people who practice with this grip will be using their forefinger as a guide to point at the bullseye. Alright, so... I just emptied my quiver here, so let's take a look at the target. Whenever I shoot, most of the time anyway, I do it from a combat-oriented approach. So that's why I will typically pull back to the jaw for a much stronger shot for more power behind it and uh, use long arrows and uh, yeah and sharpen my aim keeping both eyes open and on the target the arrow should be in your peripheral vision when you're doing this the arrow head um and your bow hand, I would suggest, yeah, line those up with the target, but your main focus should be on the target. It's like you're looking at the target and then nothing else. And that'll help. At least it'll help when you're training yourself in instinctive archery. That's the key. Those are the two key words right there, instinctive archery. And that's what I practice all the time. So yeah, this is just another example of it, and this is me practicing with my new arrows, getting used to them, and basically preparing myself for future possibilities. So, so yeah, hope you found this informative and interesting, and hopefully I'll see you soon in whatever material I come up with next.